Welcome to this session. My name is Patrick Kerwin. I'm a science teacher in Ord Scullinamora in Waterford, and I work with the Irish School of Sustainability Network. Today we're asking the question, are we paying big companies to kill us? We're going to answer that question at the end of this session. But first, let's have a look at some data from NASA, which shows us the temperatures across the world from 1880 to present day. What do you notice? So what did you notice? Five seconds to have a quick chat about it. Okay, right, we're gonna have a look at that one more time, just one more time. And you'll notice that at a certain time, a certain year, things start to change quite rapidly. Can you identify when that change starts to happen? Okay, so shout out the year that you think that global warming starts to speed up. You've got three seconds. Start shouting out now. Okay, so we can see two things from the NASA videos. One, we can see that the world is getting warmer. And two, we can see that the rate of warming is starting to speed up. And it happened around 19, in, in the 1980s. We think we know a lot about global warming or climate change. But sometimes when you ask students or adults to articulate and express what this means, they find it really hard. So right now we're going to see if we can make links between fossil fuels and all of these other things on the board. So can you connect fossil fuels to all of these and these to each other? If you've managed to do that, then maybe you can talk about these key words and see if you can link them in. So for example, just to start you off, what are the three fossil fuels and how do they link to this here? You've got two minutes to do this. Off you go. And watch the timer on the board here. That will help you to know when you're running out of time. I hope you're chatting with your partners, having a good discussion. Got about 20 seconds left. Okay, let's see how you get on. So did you realize that the three fossil fuels we're talking about here are coal, oil, and gas? And that when you burn them, they produce carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas. What does that mean? It means that carbon dioxide traps heat in the atmosphere. 
And we burn all of these to make energy, uh, electricity, for transport, for heating our homes, for lots of different reasons. But trapping heat in our atmosphere means that we've got more heat waves, forest fires, melting glaciers, flooding and droughts. And this means that it's harder to grow food or impossible to grow food in some areas of the planet now. And that is causing people to have to leave their homes, to move within their country or to move to other countries. But good news is there is lots of people like you and me who are protesting about this in lots of different ways and trying to see that climate action happens and that we are addressing this. Now, onto these figures. So all of this stuff that we've seen happen in, um, in the summer of 2021 and, and this summer gone is happening at only 1.2 degrees of warming compared to pre-industrial levels. So that we're now at 1.2 compared to like before we started burning all these fossil fuels. We don't want to go to 1.5 degrees of warming or we want to keep the temperature at 1.5, not letting it go higher because the impacts of heat waves and forest fires and flooding and droughts, they get worse. We certainly don't want to go above two degrees of warming, but this is the direction that we're headed. And that's why governments are coming together right now during COP27 to have these really important conversations. So in 1981, I was born, and at that time, the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere was 340 parts per million. Now, it's 416 parts per million. It's jumped up by nearly 22%. So when we talk about carbon dioxide emissions, it's the amount of carbon being released into the atmosphere. So we can see from this graph that carbon dioxide emissions have been increasing for a long time. And even since the Paris Agreement, or since COP21 in 2015, carbon dioxide emissions keep going up no matter what the politicians are saying. But it dropped during the pandemic, and then it started to increase again. So it's possible to get them down. Now, this crazy complicated graph, which isn't, is, is quite simple really, it's showing us greenhouse gas emissions, so those gases that trap heat in the atmosphere by sector. So agriculture, waste, industry is this slice here. But the biggest slice causing all the greenhouse gas emissions, or 73% of them, is energy. So what are we actually saying here? We're saying that the fossil fuel industry is 73% of the global warming problem. So if we can stop burning fossil fuels right now, that's getting rid of 73% of our problem. And what are we going to do? We're going to transition to renewable energies. That's the task that we have at hand. So let's have a quick game of true or false. So you're going to read these statements as a class or in your groups, and you're going to decide which one is true and which one is false. And you've got two minutes to do it. So make a start now. You can track your progress in the top with time with the bar. Got about a minute left.
Starting to wind up now. Okay, let's have a look. See how you did. ExxonMobil is a fossil fuel company. That is indeed true. Martin Hoffert was a climate scientist employed by ExxonMobil. Why would a fossil fuel company employ a climate scientist? Well, actually, they did, and that's true. In 1982, Martin worked on a scientific model, and basically, he predicted that by 2019, the Earth would reach a carbon dioxide concentration of 415 parts per million in the atmosphere, and temperature would increase to one degrees compared to pre-industrial levels. And that actually happened. So he actually predicted that in 1982. And the last sentence is actually true too. This is all true. That even though ExxonMobil, a fossil fuel company, knew the impact of global warming, they knew that fossil fuels were increasing the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere, they had accurate predictions for it, and they knew that that would cause catastrophic consequences for our climate, they still came out and issued statements saying that the evidence remains inconclusive as to whether human activities affect global climate. They made a conscious decision to deny the effect of burning fossil fuels on changing our climate. They basically told climate lies. So, questions to consider. When the fossil fuel industry knew that their activity would A, change the climate, and B, lead to catastrophic events. Why did they want the public to doubt the science? Why didn't they start transitioning to renewable forms of energy then? And unfortunately, the answer to that boils down to money. They were making a lot of money, and they didn't want to stop making that money. So they consciously lied to the public, so that we wouldn't transition to renewable energies. The fossil fuel industry earns a staggering amount of money every day in profit. And they've been doing it for the last 50 years. So can you guess how much money they earn every day in profit? Out of these four options, you've got 10 seconds to decide. Just shout it out. What do you think it is? Shout it out. Three billion dollars a day in profit for the last 50 years. And that's in a context where there's so many people in our world that are suffering inequality. That's in a context where we have an energy crisis, where people are finding it really difficult to heat their homes, who don't have the money to pay their bills because of rising energy costs. And these guys are creaming off a huge amount of money. So let's put this in context. The numerous oil spills that the fossil fuel industry have caused. This article talking about Louisiana energy firm to pay millions following oil spill that began 17 years ago, wreaking havoc on our oceans and our environment and all the organisms that live there. The fossil fuel industry are causing a huge amount of deaths because of air pollution. So this article talks about an invisible killer. Fossil fuels caused 8.7 million deaths globally in just 2018. And now these companies are being sued. They're being sued because they've lied to us. They've lied to us about the cause and effect of burning fossil fuels and what that has done to the amount of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. And they've tried to hide the fact that burning fossil fuels leads to catastrophic climate breakdown. And they've been doing it for decades. And we are paying these people. The bosses at the top are doing all of this. They've lied. They've jeopardized human civilization and our futures for money. And they're still doing it. So I want to tell you a story, a true story. Just before, days before, 
wildfires spread across the southeast of England just last summer, this summer gone, an article was published in the Daily Mail by this gentleman called Stephen Robinson. And the article said, why can't the Met office just tell us the weather instead of spreading alarm and scolding us with doom laden lectures? So basically, he is accusing the Met office, the UK Centre for Climate Research, of being alarmist. Now, who is this guy? Is he a climate scientist? Is he a journalist who works for the Daily Mail? Is he a speechwriter for companies operating in the energy sector? So perhaps the fossil fuel industry. Shout out, what do you think? Five seconds. Who do you think he is? Well, Leo Hickman, who is a journalist for The Guardian, he did his own bit of research and he did a quick Google on LinkedIn and he found out that actually Stephen Robertson is a speechwriter for companies operating in the energy sector. So perhaps the fossil fuel industry. Now, he's saying this about being alarmist because he wants the, to affect public opinion. The fossil fuel industry have been working really hard for decades to undermine climate action. They don't want it to happen. And they want to publish these articles so that it starts to seep into public consciousness that this isn't real, it's not a big deal, it's all okay, it's fine. Because public opinion influences politicians and it influences what they see as priorities for the public. And that affects what we do as a society and the laws that we have. Now, recently the Guardian published an article about carbon bombs. So you've got these four big companies, ExxonMobil, Shell, BP and Chevron. They're all fossil fuel companies and they earned two trillion in profits in the last 30 years. Now, they have 195 gigantic oil and gas projects on the go or in the pipeline. And these will emit at least a billion tons of carbon dioxide emissions over the lifetime of their projects. And this equates, this is equal to 18 years of current global carbon dioxide emissions. That means for us, game over. It means that we haven't stopped burning fossil fuels. We haven't stopped extracting them from the ground. And it means that we haven't secured a livable future. It's really important that we have these climate and nature conversations, that we know what's going on, that we're on top of current affairs so that we can actually talk to our politicians and representatives and campaign to stop these people. They are highly organized. And that means that we also have to be highly organized and get on top of our game. Right. That's the end of part one of this session. Part two You'll find a link to part two in the text above the uh, video here on the website. It's a short talk by Ali Sheridan on fossil fuel subsidies. And then there's a fun walk-in debate at the end. But what maybe you should do right now is think about, look, am I overloaded with information? If you feel like that was a lot of information, then perhaps you could open up part two and go straight to the walk-in debate at the end. If you feel like, oh, actually, I'm up for a challenge and learning a bit more about fossil fuel subsidies, then start off the talk uh, in part two with Ali Sheridan. It's absolutely fascinating. And then do the walk and debate at the end. So you decide.